Now we've taken care of the first two steps in implementing joint vibration analysis. We have our plan on who we're going to record JVA on and we know how to take good data. We're now beginning to accumulate data. The third step is when and why are you going to interpret data. You may interpret every JVA that you take based upon your plan, um, but in some cases we have doctors that like to screen everybody or just screen sort of prophylactically to just make sure that nothing's going wrong. Um, in those cases, when you see an anomaly in range of motion or if you see that there are vibrations on the open and or closing cycle, what we recommend and what we've seen our most successful clients do is a very quick pain function dentistry analysis. Very simple, four questions. Number one, do you have pain in the joint, in the muscles, in the surrounding areas? If they say no, we move on. If uh, we go to the second question then, and the second question is, would you have difficulty chewing gum? And third, would you have difficulty chewing a bagel? There's our functional analysis. If they answer no to both of those questions, then we sit down with the patient and we make a determination, are we planning any significant dentistry between now and our next JVA screening? If the answer to all four questions is no, no pain, no functional issues in chewing gum or chewing a bagel or a steak, and we're not planning any significant dentistry, there may not be a whole lot of urgency to interpreting that joint vibration analysis, but you save it because you have an objective record of where they are today. If they answer yes, yes I have pain, yes I have a difficulty chewing, or yes I'm planning on doing significant dentistry, be that third molar extraction, crown and bridge, full mouth reconstruction, ortho, whatever, um, then you're going to want to take a look at JVA, interpret it, um, and incorporate it with the rest of your biometrics. Now in the first year that you own JVA, the only thing it's going to help you do is to determine where are they today. Um, but what's really exciting is that JVA's value increases exponentially as you use it throughout the years. Because imagine the patient walking in your office today, you have four years of JVA screening on this patient, and they want a full mouth reconstruction, or they've developed pain, or they have a functional issue. And you look at their joint vibration analysis, and it says they have degenerative joint disease, or their, their profile is most consistent with degenerative joint disease. Um, that certainly if you just know that, that's going to have some impact on your treatment. But imagine you could then look at their JVA four years ago and it was most consistent with normal. And two years ago was disc displacement with reduction. And last year was disc displacement with degenerative joint disease. And now this year it's most consistent with degenerative joint disease. There we have a patient that's actively moving through, or at least appears to be actively moving through, uh, the, the progression of TM joint breakdown. Whereas you have another patient come in, answers yes to one of the pain function dentistry questions, and their JVA four years ago was disc displacement with reduction. And it's, that's what it was two years ago, that's what it was three years ago, that's what it was last year, and that's what it is now. There, while we have a potential pathology in the joint, it's something that's stable and hasn't been changing over time. Those are two completely different patients. So by employing JVA screening, and then at the review phase, employing a pain function dentistry analysis to determine whether you have a reason to read it or not is something that really makes JVA effective because you're not interpreting every single one as you go along. And it helps you save time and it really, I think, adds to the um, value of joint vibration analysis in your office.